said, we don't know how many people there were. There might have been 100, there might have been 300, there might have been 220, we don't know. But he looked down at them and he said, forgive them. He didn't throw a, throw a fit and, and say, let me down. What's the song we could that we sing? He could have called 10,000 angels. Matter of fact, because he was the Son of God, would he have had to call 10,000 angels to take himself off the cross? Absolutely not. He was able to go from place to place, uh, disappear out of crowds, go through walls. Nothing stopped him because he was the Son of God. So, um, Carrie, if you can read Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 44, a familiar passage, uh, but one day he's going to say to every one of us, Today you get to come to paradise. So if you can read our verses. Theological circles, there's a, some people question this event because some say oh, there's three crosses, we know that. Jesus in the middle, a couple thieves, whatever they had done, we don't not we're not even totally sure what they did. And Jesus hanging on the cross, they no doubt saw most of the events. You can get the picture of Jesus being beaten, hung on the cross. Um, sat in the ground, nailed. We talked about the nails in his wrists and his feet last week. All the events that happened. And then there they probably saw what was going on. And they're in pain too, physically. They're in just as much physical pain as Jesus because was Jesus the 100% man? Of course he was. We've suffered pains. Uh, accidents happened. You, you've there have been broken legs, uh, surgeries, you name it. You've cut yourself. You, you know all kinds of things have happened, and we know what pain is. So they felt this pain. So they're in this agony too. So Jesus is sitting there and are hanging there, and one starts railing on him as the world does. The world rails on God. They rail on Christianity. So they said, here's the Son of God, and, and instead, of, instead of realizing, instead of both of these men realizing that something could really change their lives, one says, oh, this is a bunch of baloney, I, this is a bunch of hogwash, what are you, what, what's going on? But the other one said, Lord, remember me. He had enough faith, he had enough faith to realize that something's happening, something's going on, and, and I, I, I want to be part of it. So, um, it's a word of pardon. Um, it doesn't take much, but the key word here is pardon. Now, our presidents in our country, a president has the ability any time while of office. Most of them wait till the end of their term. Some of them wait till the last day, and they'll pardon whoever they want to. It could be a, it could be a murder suspect. It could be a criminal. It doesn't matter who it is. The president, our system is set up so the president can pardon anyone. That means when he says sentence wiped out, they have to wipe out the, the rest of the penalty, they have to release that person from prison, and they're a free man or woman. It's, it's done. It's pardoned. At Thanksgiving, they always pardon the turkey. They always have a special turkey, and they pardon them, and that turkey is not allowed to be killed and all other stuff. Well, the human beings, uh, they get to have a pardon. So this word... Uh, that was spoken, it spoke of, 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 of a man that was fully aware of his sin. Um, he said many things we don't know about this man. We don't know his name, his age, or his crime. We, we don't need to. You know, we don't need to know who his name is. In the Bible, a lot of people are named. Peter. You say, oh yeah, Peter, he's, he's remembered for what he did. Jesus he said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell show a not one. Not go against it. But then later, the same man, the very same Peter, he denied the Lord Jesus Christ, but his name's in the Bible. 
all through my Christian life, I heard a lot of people say, well, I, I wish my name was in the Bible. Well, what if your name was in the Bible and everybody heard about what you did wrong? It's evidence of God's working in the, in the, in the heart. Now, that's God's plan. Uh, this man, he was aware of the knowledge of his heart. Now, they say there's a 18-inch difference between knowing of God and knowing God. They say your heart, you can know of God in your mind, you can know that something is there, that there's a God, but it's accepting into your heart. And I'm not saying, we talked about this a few weeks ago, when you're talking to little children, you have to be careful, well, because I've had kids say, well, how can you let Jesus in your heart? A child looks at things literally because they don't understand the just of everything. Well, they think that a man has to go in their body and get in their little heart. Well, it's talking about our soul. It's talking about our being. Well, we can know of God. A lot of people will say, well, I know God, I know God. Well, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? There's a big difference. So, the evidence of his heart. Uh, God knows our hearts, and he knows what our hearts will do. He knows where they're going. Um, there's an assurance here that sins are forgiven, because as this man said, remember me, Jesus didn't waste any time. He didn't say, okay, I'll pray for you. Okay, I'll just, I, I'll pray for you and get back to me in a couple of days. He said today. Now, that's instant. Read a thing the other day. It said, why? It said, it said, man, if your wife says to you, if you have time or when you have time, that means get your shoes on because she wants it done right now. <laughs> oh, you speak from experience. She wants it done right now. Um, and my wife's like in some things, not everything, but she says get your do it. She wants it done now. Well, Jesus didn't waste any time. As soon as this man said, remember me, he spoke to him. Now, let's go back to our 23rd Psalm study we did a while back. Let's go back to last week. Personal pronouns. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He said, you, you. You, you want forgiveness? You want to be with me? You want me to remember you? It's done. Now, you talk about instant prayer. And instant answers. Do we always get answers real quick? Do we always do sometimes get frustrated because God doesn't do it fast enough? Of course we do. In our country, we want things fast. We want fast food. We want fast cars. We want everything to work right now. But it's promise from life, promise of life from the Lord. Now, we have this physical life. We enjoy it. My wife loves this time of year. Flowers, when they start coming up, she is excited. <coughs> little bitty twigs, little bitty crocuses, little bitty, little bitty tops of flowers. Looking at some of the things yesterday, the lilies. It's not very big. The deer's already started eating the tops of them off because they're looking for food. Well, I went around the yard last night yesterday and sprayed this stuff. It's basically garlic. And rotten eggs. It stinks. George is shaking her head. You know why? She bought some the other day and sprayed her some of it. Because there, she goes out the other day, deer in the yard, she went from here to the pew, going like this. They just looked at her and said, go ahead, little old lady, just make some noise. We don't care. They just looked at her said, we, we're not afraid of you. But I sprayed this stuff on them, and until it rains, the deer don't like that smell. Garlic or rotten eggs, good combination. Uh, but it works. It smelled the yard up. Becky was working. We were working on the yard yesterday, but it smelled the yard up some. But now the deer won't bother it for a while. We'll have to put a fence around some of the lilies, but they want to eat too. But go back to this. It's a personal salvation. Uh, well, let's back up a little bit. Uh, it's a word that is personal. You can't get any more personal than you can be in paradise with me. Guess what? He didn't, Jesus didn't say, I'm going to send you there. You can be with me. We're talking beforehand. Lazarus. I have to look at I think he, I don't think he died again until after Jesus, or if there's even a mention of it, but he was raised from the dead. 
Talk about Sunday school today. But he had to die again. You think he's ready the second time? No big deal. I've already done this. I've already done this, but the first time he went down in paradise, the second time he got to go to heaven. And there's a difference. Paradise is as close to heaven as you can get, but it wasn't heaven. He got to go to paradise. Then he got to go to heaven. But it was a personal thing. Jesus said, today thou shalt be in paradise with me. I'm not going to send you by yourself. The thief cries out for personal salvation. Here it is. In paradise. We enjoy this world. Some people like warmer weather than colder weather. Some people like cold weather. Some people people live up in Alaska and the Arctic Circle and Canada. They, a lot of them say they love it. They love it that it's cold. We were watching a show the other night. They're building way up in Alaska. This guy way out in the, building off the grid, building this cabin up there. Well, it was a time of year when they got 23 hours of daylight. 23, that's a long work day. 23 hours of daylight. But then in the winter, they have almost that much darkness. But they love, he, out way up there in the middle of nowhere, you can only get there by plane, landing on the water or on the ice and all that. But he said, we're going to love it here. No electricity, no running water. Bring in your own water. He said, the only good thing is in the wintertime, you don't have to have refrigeration. Just set it out on the porch. But it's got to be in a box, a lock box, because there's these things that have four legs. They're called bears. They like food. They said when they went up, up to Montana and all that, they said you can't have any soft campers up there because bears will just tear it open and eat your food and tear everything up. So, here's another pronoun. In paradise, we will be with Jesus in heaven when we die. Here's another pronoun. We. If you're saved, you get to go to heaven. But we're not going to be there by ourselves. We get to say praise the Lord. We get to worship Him for all eternity. So he said, today thou shalt be a in paradise. Then real quickly, so we go to the second one. The cry of salvation. Verily I say unto you, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. It proves that salvation is all of grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Dale's not here, but his favorite verses for grace you saved through faith. It's a gift of God. Let's say man should post. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's a gift. It proves... 100% that salvation is of, is of Jesus Christ, not of anyone else. It proves lastly on this part that salvation comes instantly. There's some people in Romans 10, 9, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy mouth the Lord God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We don't have to wait as some people say. Some people say you get saved, and then you have to complete it. You have to do this, and then you have to do step two. And then you have to do step three, and then you have to do step four. I've heard people say, well, and I asked, ask, well, you got to do these steps. How do you know when you've completed them? And they said they didn't know. But they, well, when it happened, you know. Wouldn't that be a great way to be saved, to not know? And then they said, don't know how long you can keep it. I'm saved. December 3rd, 1972, I became a born-again Christian. I have never lost it. I will never lose it. You will never lose your salvation. The moment you ask Jesus to save you, He came into your heart and saved you. So, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And then the next cry, the cry of provision, John chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Do you have that ready, Gary? Oh. Jesus was there. We don't know, we know, not we don't know, we know that not very many of his disciples were there. Matter of fact, we're going to talk about his mother. How many other disciples were at the cross that we know of? John. Now, you've seen pictures of the Holy Land, and like me and Dave were talking, I'd love to go see the Holy Land. It's always been a dream of mine. Right now would not be the time to do it. It wouldn't be the time to do it, but to go and see... And walk where Jesus walked. 
and see the places he walked and see the places that happened. Now, I know they've commercialized it. Uh, there are people that still tell me there are people over there who are still selling pieces of wood and they're saying it's from the original cross that Jesus died on. All the pieces of wood that have been sold, even if it was a life-size cross, that cross would be gone. And who's to prove this from the original cross? But they say that it's commercialized, of course. But Jesus' mother was there. Now, back in those days, and today too somewhat, when the husband died, when the man of the house died, the oldest son was in charge. He was the man of the house. So, read our verses, Carrie. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. When Mary is young, she got a message from the angel, said you're going to be... Um, you're going to be the bearer of the Messiah. We talk about this. In the Old Testament, the Jewish women, women, they, their desire was to get pregnant because they knew according to prophecy, according to what the Bible said, that some woman along the way would be the mother, the earthly mother of the Messiah. So they wanted to do that. And although she didn't understand all that that happened, um, she became the one... Um, however, as some teach and practice, she is not a redeemer. She is not to be praised. She is not to be prayed to. However, God's word is very, very clear on the, on the issue. It said, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So here's Mary. Um, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We know that. There's no other way to get saved. Um, First Corinthians, I mean, in Colossians, most of the other translations of the Bible says that verse says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Almost every other translation of the Bible other than the King James leaves out the last three words. It just says, in whom we have redemption. It, 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 it doesn't say, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Mary was not the one that gave us that salvation, but she was the one who was had the privilege to give birth to the Messiah. Um, he turned her away from himself earlier. Uh, from now on, John was going to be the one because he was in charge. He was the man of the house. He was taking and transferring that responsibility to John. Giving his disciple the responsibility to make sure his mom's okay. They didn't have welfare back then. They didn't have food stamps back then. They didn't have government help back then. They had to rely on each other, so he appointed this, this trusted man to be in charge of his mother. Say, so you take care of my mother. How many of us, today, if my mom would have been 83, how many of you would have been able to look at your mother and say, woman? Anybody? What would have happened to you if you would have? Anybody? You might not be here today. If I ever did that, we weren't even allowed to call him by the first name. Boy, we got in trouble. If I ever said Norma or Ron, that was, that was almost instant death. But to look at her and say, woman, no. That wasn't the way he used it. He didn't use it sarcastically. That's how they spoke at that time. He got her attention. He said, woman, behold thy son. And he gave that, that responsibility over to, to John. The relationship is no longer a mother to a son. It's now a savior to a needy person. Every one of us, when you got saved, the savior was waiting for you to come. You were that needy person. You needed salvation. However old you were, there are children to get saved. There are adults to get saved. Doesn't matter what age. So let's look at the Son on the cross. Loretta mentioned it years ago, years and years ago. Uh, she read a story about a guy who went into a jewelry store and he's looking for a necklace with the cross. And the jeweler showed him a necklace with the cross. And he said, No, I want one of those with the man on it. 
Number one, he probably didn't know who was on the cross. But Jesus isn't still on the cross. Empty cross. Yes, he was hung on the cross. But he's not still there. And we're glad he isn't. Jesus set a, a wonderful example, as he always does. Jesus carefully is taking care of her future needs. Because he knows, as God, he knows he's about to die. He knows there's going to be needs that Mary has. He knows that she can't meet them because even, and we can't even get into all of it, even back then, the culture was different and women didn't have rights. They didn't have the rights that men had. Things were totally, totally different back then. So he's careful to make sure that she's taken care of. He wasn't willing to die and leave his mother, the one who raised him. He was fulfilling the word of God. God instructed children on how they were to treat their parents. Honor thy father and mother that thy days will be long upon the earth. Um, and we know that God does promise that and he gives that to us. And then the last thing, there was Jesus on the cross. Once again, I have no idea what kind of crowd is here, but I do believe that back in the back of the crowd, back behind the pole, back behind the tree, was the devil. And he was sitting back there watching all the events that are happening. He watched as Jesus, they brought Jesus up to Via Dolorosa. He watched as Jesus was beaten, as we talked about last week. How many times do you say you're allowed to have a beating? How many times do we say? 39. But if you did 40, what happened? We said that the soldier who was admitting that, whoever was administering that punishment, he had to take that. So as he was being beaten, he couldn't carry... I'm a good so weak, you can't even hardly stand up. He couldn't carry his cross. Called Simon the Cyrene. Hey, you, come on over here. We need your help. Get over here. Carried the cross. Now, most people believe it was the main upward beam and or the cross beam. While there wasn't the whole cross, they say they put it together usually after at the scene, but not always, but let's suppose that. Satan's back there watching. He has watched the trials. He has watched everything happen. And he's back there, I can imagine, and he's wringing his hands. Back in our day, we always said you smile like a Cheshire cat. How many have heard that phrase? Yeah. Big old Cheshire cat had a big smile on his face. I believe Satan, the Bible doesn't say this happened, but I believe he's in the background lurking behind a tree or a pole or a bill, you know, whatever it is. And he's saying, it's all coming together. And he's saying, I get to be the ruler. After all, what did he do to Jesus? Took him up on the pinnacle. What did he tell him up there? If, if you'll bow down to me, I'll give you what? What did he say? I'll give all this to you. <coughs> Jesus made it all. He already owned it. So I believe he's back there in the background. And he's smiling, and he's laughing, and his minions are laughing, and they're just having a good old time because he knows this man that he knows is called Jesus is about to die. Now, I don't believe he knew everything was going to happen. Number one, yes, he probably knows the Bible now because it's already written, but it wasn't written then. So I don't believe Satan knew what was going to happen. He knew the events. He knew what was going to happen. He knew something was happening. He may have known something from the plans that God made when, when he was in heaven. We don't know all that, but he knew Jesus was about to die, and he was happy. Jumping up and down, clapping. We'll talk about what happens in a couple of weeks. You know what happens. It's going to change. So you have Jesus on the cross, and you have the disciple at the cross. This shows diligence, faithfulness. Honor. He was the only one of the twelve that was there. Peter had followed, you know, he, he had followed afar off. And then, of course, he denied the Lord three separate times. We talked about that. 
Matthew 25, 56 tells us that of the disciples with him in the time of, of, of his arrest, they forsook him and they fled. Now, before we go any farther, real quick, are they humans? Are they humans? Did they have genuine fear? We've talked about this before and asked you what some people are afraid of. We know Jim's afraid of snakes and Anne's afraid of mice. Dennis the Menace the other day. His mom had him over his over her skirt and she's getting her spanking. He said, You better be careful, there's a snake in my back pocket. That would have made Jim happy, wouldn't it? Jim would have thrown Dennis the Menace. Uh, but, but I've asked, and we're all afraid of something. Some people are afraid of the dark. Some people are afraid of elevators. Some people are afraid of escalators. Um, I never did. Never, never, never did like Ferris wheels. All this other stuff. Ever had a ride? Upside down, roller coasters, backwards, forwards, sideways. I've ridden the roller coasters. Spun around as you're going on down to Florida. I love those things. Now, I might get on one now and get sicker than a dog. But I love them. But we're all afraid of something. We're all, everybody's got some kind of fear, some kind of phobia. Well, here's Peter. Here's Matthew. They all were afraid. He says, Matthew said they, they ran away. Well, they were afraid they'd die too. But he and three women stood by the cross. So that kind of gives you an indication that the crowd wasn't real big. But they're standing there. They're faithful. I would imagine it's not an easy place to stand. And if a sinner, when a sinner decides they're going to get saved, they find out it's easy to stand by the cross. Now we don't worship this thing. We don't worship the cross, the wood. We don't worship it. It's a symbol that reminds us of what Jesus did. But as we realize we're sinners, we get to go to the cross. And we're not physically like John and Mary and the, the other couple of women. We're not standing there physically in front of the cross. But symbolically, when you got saved, you knelt at the cross. Because that's where Jesus died. That's where he died. If we want to go along with the crowd, we won't take a stand at the cross. You know, it's getting harder and harder, and you have to be more, I'm sorry to say bolder and bolder, I guess that is proper. In order to follow Jesus, with the phrase, you got to have guts today. Because there are so many people against us. Saw Dale a couple weeks ago at Sam's. And I had, I had a hat on it. I said, where'd you get that hat? It's got a symbol on it. And it looks like it's a hat from the army. But it's the army of God. I said, I want one of those. I got old Sylvie said, where'd you get that? Your dad said you got it. She said, I don't know. I got it a year ago. I got on that little thing. How many have ever ordered anything from Amazon? Anybody? How many have ever had? How many have I didn't know idea what Amazon is? <laughs> Mike, you're going to get yourself in trouble today. Uh, you live that way. Uh, I got on Amazon and found one. First one I found was $34.99. I said, I don't want it that long. Found another one for $12. And on the front of it says, I love Jesus. On the back says, I love Jesus. I've been wearing it. Somebody told me the other day, said, thank you for your service. I said, I serve the Lord. And that's what Dale said. A couple of people said, have said, thank you for your service. He said, I'm in God's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the army of the Holy Spirit. That's where we have to take a stand in our world today because all around us and in our city we live in, there are a lot of people who have nothing to do with God. There's some people who say they know God, of God. All kinds of people have told me they're going crazy over this eclipse. They're, they're worshiping the sun. 
300,000 people are going to be in town just to see the eclipse because we're right in the path. We're right in the path to see the thing. <coughs> Don't look at it without your glasses. I'll give you your glasses. Uh, we got those. They weren't very much. But they're worshiping this event. Not only that, the people who are around here are taking advantage of it. Guess how many millions of dollars are going to be made? There, there are watch parties all over our state. Even though in the southern part and northern part of the state you aren't going to see the total eclipse, there are all kinds of watch parties. We help over at the pantry, of course, in Ellisville, and, and, and Cindy, the manager there, she lives by Jiffy Treat. Her husband works in Smithville. I don't even know where Smithville is. Compared to where the eclipse is going, everybody's going to be lined up on 46 and at the stadium. Smithville's hiring extra security because they said people are going to be camping out everywhere. Dave, you got a big yard. There might be some looking for going to go your yard. Mike, there may be some camping in your yard. I don't know. I said, if I had the driveway, I'd, I'd let them pay me 40 bucks just park in the driveway that day. But all this stuff over the sun. It's fine. It's an event that doesn't happen very often. Wouldn't it be nice if 300,000 people were coming to Bloomington to worship God? Wouldn't that be a revival? Wow. Today, that should be within paradise. Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. Jesus is getting ready. He's preparing. We have to do the same thing. Heavenly Father, maybe somebody's watching my video today and they've never accepted your son as their own personal Savior. Influence them to talk to you. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come in and save me completely. Forgive me of my sins. I want to serve you. And if you're watching my video today, I'd like to encourage you to get involved in a local church. Those of you who are here with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. We're focusing on Easter. I pray that as we put our eyes toward these next couple weeks, that your emphasis will be on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, give us the willingness, the fortitude, the guts to be a testimony for you. To tell others about Jesus. To invite them to church. To do what we can to see people saved. Bless as we finish this service. As we go into our Sunday school hour. Our day. The day of the week that we dedicate to you. We set aside the Lord's day. Bless us Lord. We'll thank you for it in Christ's name.